So we've got about five minutes just to start looking at how we're using monitoring technology to better inform our decision making and ultimately how that decision making is changing our athletes winning potential which is what it's all about at the end of the day. Now we put four sections on the board two of them I think are monitoring methodologies which we're using to inform decisions right now on a more commonplace two are perhaps a little newer but hold huge value so we're going to explore those two new areas as well. The first area and the oldest area is I've termed context. Context is really athlete perception. We need to know what they feel like, how well they feel for training today. And we're using things like profile of mood states and wellness questionnaires to help us do this. Now, if you're doing this and a lot of people are doing this, um, this can be quite dull for the athletes. So if there's no outcome attached to this, if they feel there's no benefit from doing it, they're going to stop pretty quick. So if you're taking these kind of data and it's really important that you are collecting something here, that it is actionable and the athletes see that. So we said athlete perception. Well, athlete perception is athlete reality. That's what you've got to coach. So let's really make sure we understand our athletes here. And we're doing a great job. Everyone's doing a great job understanding where their athletes have come from. The next one over here is called how, and that's one of the new ones. So I'm gonna leave that for now, and I'm gonna come back to it in a moment. I'm gonna dive down here and look at outcome. So the outcome column, I'm really interested in training load and training intensity. So quantifying the training session that I've just done. In metrics as well, the coaches like. Um, so uh, think of GPS data here, think of power outputs like watts, so in nice, digestible, coach-friendly language, we want to see what was the session like? And actually, in my pre-planned ordeal, in my pre-planned programming, did I get what I thought I should? So things like GPS are now giving us thousands of data points that we can pour over. And invariably, that's really where the monitoring technology has led us so far. Understand our athletes better, understand training load better against pre-planned outcomes, and we see saw between these two ventures. How do you feel today? Yeah, I feel good. Let's knock out a session. Here's the session. This is what we actually did. The next session, how do you feel? I'm ready to go. I feel tired. My muscles are sore. I'm good to go. We hit them again and we go again. And so we see saw between these two monitoring methods most of the time. Now, I said GPS gives you thousands of data points. Now, the law of diminishing averages means we get more and more data and less and less actionable outcomes. There are two points on the board here, which are empty at the minute, that hold massive value. So one is the how column. What I mean here is how are our athletes achieving the speed, the strength, the endurance that we see? So we're gonna move away from fixed percentage ideas like fixed percentage RMs, uh, fixed percentage of heart rates or recovery intervals of time. And we can use that to guide, but really what we're looking at is real time physiological monitoring. So actually with our athlete, we've got this guide, but actually with them, what are they doing? Actually, how do they perform? And what I'm really interested in is what is their limit to performance? And if I push you past this limit, how do you compensate? And if I can harness that information, I can really get to know my athletes better. So I can work on this limiter more and that's ultimately where I'm gonna get some more margin in my winning potential. So I understand your perception. I even understand how you're achieving what you're achieving. I can quantify that against my pre-planned and it leads us to the fruits of your labor in the response column. And what I mean here is what is the adaptation that we have created? Is it positive adaptation? Ultimately, that's what we're looking for. We use a technology here called Amiga Wave, which looks at the regulatory response of the body from all of this input, plus all the additional life stress. Because remember, their adaptation is to their full 24 hours, not just the training program. So Amiga Wave gives them information from central nervous system and autonomic nervous system, things like direct current, so DC, things like HRV. We also get an ECG, 
and we can look at energy index as well. So energy index is a bit more longitudinal, but we get a whole heap of information about how their regulation is being affected by the training. Now, it opens up an interesting question, and I'm going to term it up here, called readiness. You said you were good to go. We did this training session. We quantified the outcome. We created a positive adaptation, and we saw that in some of the regulatory responses in the body. The obvious question is, what am I ready to do next? How long does it take to digest this before I train again? An Amiga Wave we can use again as a readiness indicator. So for training or competition, are you ready to now do another training bout? And if you are, what type of training will best suit you and how you will further adapt? And ultimately, that's going to be one of the big benefits from opening up this response column in your data collection management process. So if we're doing this really well and this really well, these are the two columns to start considering. Like I say, there's a ton of information on the how column and there's a whole heap of information on the response column. And adding those, I think you'll find invaluable to better make decisions which affect your athlete's winning potential.